So Microsoft's latest operating system, Windows 11, is it a success or is it a failure? A lot of people were very upset with the TPM requirements. Some people only had a six or five year old computer, which couldn't be upgraded to Windows 11 because of the TPM requirements put into place by Microsoft, which upset a lot of people. Now you can bypass it, but we don't know what the outcome is going to be from Microsoft as of yet. They may stop security updates for it in the near future. So is it worth uh, upgrading to Windows 11 or should you stay with Windows 10? That's another question I get quite a bit. Windows 10 and Windows 11 are probably the same operating system. All that's happened is it's had some major feature upgrades like the GUI pack and things like that to make it look like a new operating system. But it is Windows 10 under the hood. And a lot of operating systems from Microsoft have been exactly that, feature updates. Now, a lot of people that can upgrade to Windows 11 have chosen not to. If you look at this here, this survey they've done, you can see only a small percentage of people have actually upgraded, 8.6%, compared to the massive amount of people still using Windows 10. So you can see not everyone has jumped ship to Windows 11. And probably a lot of this is to do with the fact that some of them can't upgrade to Windows 11 because of the TPM requirements. So a lot of these so-called incompatible uh, computers that aren't compatible for Windows 11 are going to be landfill the time the life cycle ends for Windows 10 in October 14th, 2025. Now remember, Windows 11 is not a necessary upgrade by any means because all you're going to be getting or gaining is some added features and a much more modern UI with some rounded corners and other added features. But the problem is, this is work in progress. This has not been finished, and you are going to still see some major problems with Windows 11. So we are basically using an unfinished operating system, which is being rolled out piece by piece to the consumer. Now, there is ways of making Windows 11 much more usable in my personal opinion and that is by changing the start bar with start 11 or something like start all back this makes the use of windows 11 a much more better experience in my personal opinion i just don't like the menu system and i just don't like the start menu and i don't like a bunch of other things with windows 11 but these are being fixed as we speak and they do roll these out with feature updates Nothing has really changed with Windows 11. There's still massive telemetry issues and there are still massive privacy issues where people are having to go through and turn off a bunch of features that they don't want. And if anything, Windows 11 has become even more bloated with even more bloat than ever before. Now, that's not to say that I don't like Windows 11 because I do think it's a step in the right direction with what they're trying to do but I just don't think they needed to upset as many people with some of the strict requirements that they were asking people uh, to do when they were upgrading to Windows 11. There is still some capable computers out there like the first gen Ryzen's and the eighth gen processors of Intel. They're still very capable computers in 2022. Yes, you can continue to use Windows 10, but that's only gonna be up until 2025. And then what are these people supposed to do after that? Buy a new computer? Not everyone can afford a new computer. So it's put people into a difficult situation that they never asked for. Now, if we take a look at the privacy section, you can see there is even more stuff added to the privacy and security area. There's even talks of features that will need a fresh install if you enable them. And, uh, you know, that's just unacceptable. And if you don't believe me, take a look at this smart app control, smart app control adds significant protection from malware. So if you want to enable this feature by default, it is turned off. But if you want to enable this advanced malware protection called smart app control, then you're going to need to use the reset this PC option. Let me show you where it tells you all about it down here. So we're just going to go down to the bottom here and take a look here. Why can't I uh, turn on smart app control? And you can see here, it's asking you to basically use the reset this PC once you turn it on. I mean, it's that's just crazy. 
And you guessed it, once you enable a smart app control, Microsoft uses AI and Microsoft Cloud Knowledge Database to check every app that runs in the background, blocking anything that's unassigned, unfamiliar, or unknown, or to be known malicious. So more monitoring from Microsoft. If you look at the start menu here, you can see there's tons of apps that are bundled inside the operating system when you do an install that you didn't ask for. And you're going to have to go through and uninstall all of this uh, bloat every single time. And when you change all of these settings, you may think that they're set in stone and they're never going to be changed again because you've set them that way. But as soon as you do a feature update, everything gets reset back to default, which means you've got to go into your operating system and go for all your settings and change all that stuff again. And, you know, it's just the forcing of signing into an account, even with a Microsoft Pro account, you're going to have to uh, log in to an account to set up Windows. And this is what they're trying to do is force you to be logged in to an account uh, all the time. And this is so they can collect data and harvest data. So it's not good. And yes, it is a step forward. We are going to be protected against malware from up to 60% more. And it's adding more features that are going to keep you safe. And I do agree that it is a step in the right direction. But to have to reset your PC... And the same thing with feature updates, having to keep changing everything back. And all of this is just to get a few extra added, upgraded, um, you know, UI, and also some added extra nice features that they're adding in, which most people are never going to use anyway. I would like to see Windows 10 extended for a longer period, up to maybe 2028 or even 2030. You know, so can give people a chance to continue to use their computers the way they wanted to use them when they bought them. Some people don't upgrade every two, three, four years. You know, a lot of people are upgrading every eight to 10 years. So you're taking that ability to, for them people to use their computers for that period of time when it comes to 2025, unless they go and install Linux or they go and install uh, some other sort of operating system. So you can understand for a lot of people, Windows 11 is a big no and they're not going to upgrade to Windows 11 anytime soon. And it's possible they could end up jumping ship to a new operating system like Linux. So let me know in the comments section below what your opinions are on Windows 11 and what you like about it and what you don't like about it. I'd be interested to read your comments. And also let me know in the comments section below whether you are staying on Windows 10 and you're never going to upgrade to Windows 11 and you'll consider what you're going to do after that when it comes to the end of life for Windows 10. I'll be interested to read all your comments about it. Anyway, I think that is going to be about it for this video. I shall catch you in another one. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who have joined my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate the support, and I'll catch you in another video real soon. Bye for now.